Once upon a time, as in several months ago, I made a video talking about the best taverns and inns in Guild Wars 2. I mentioned that I would be talking about the best bars and clubs in a future video, so here we are. These are my 10 favorite bars and clubs across the entirety of Guild Wars 2. And the number 10 spot is the Serrated Blade Tavern. This is a tavern located in the Canton Factorium of the Black Citadel, and I think this is a good opportunity to talk about the difference between this top 10 list and the previous one where I was deciding upon a bunch of these different locations for the previous list, and a lot of them seemed to be distinctly different from others, where I made the list about taverns and inns, many of which have bars, to stick to buildings that are more for the purpose of being a cozy environment for people to escape to and to get a room for the evening. Where this list is more for the buildings that you would come to to hang out at and party in, mostly around the idea of drinking and less to do with food or sleeping, where a bunch of the places on this list could be on the other list and vice versa, but I decided to separate them in this way. Anyways, this tavern is pretty cool. It's mostly just a two-story building where the top story is a small order whispers outpost with some agents hanging out. But the bottom level features a bar and some standing tables with various char drinking and chatting. The vibes of this place mix together char themes into a bar atmosphere pretty well. The tables are like metal barrels that patrons can set drinks down on. The bar itself is a bunch of those barrels with a metal slab on top. And then there are a ton of decorations behind the bar. Different colors of drinks with taps, a small grill where they are cooking steak and presumably some seafood as well. And the rest of the bar is nicely decorated as well, but with a few less details than behind the bar. In the number 9 spot is Mini Diod's Nectar Bar. This is a Savari in Lion's Arch who we can see is walking around with an Asura named Edda. But if you go back to the memory of Lion's Arch before the events of Scarlet Briar's attacks, we can see that he used to run a bar with another Savari. In the Eastern Ward as you come off of a bridge made from a variety of old ships, you can find this open air operation with a variety of patrons around. You got a couple of guards, a few citizens, and Clag who can give you a rifle to get to the nearby rock in the water. I think it's cool that there is this random Savari in Lance Arch that is just running a random bar selling Savari drinks off in a corner of the city. But I think it gets a little bit more interesting when you talk to him because you can ask what's the story of this bar, it's a bit unusual. To which he replies, We applied for a license for an open air, self serve milk your own flora nectar bar, but the captain's council has a very specific requirements for taverns. Hence, this wooden bar and bottled ales. Now, I think there could be a variety of different ideas surrounding a Savari running a milk your own flora nectar bar, and I'll just leave that as that. In the number 8 spot is the Courage Brewery. This is a Norn bar located in the Beer Garden in Holbrack. This is a very minimalistic Norn bar where you have Matilda here who keeps a keg stocked. There's no bar table or anything, just a line of kegs where Norn can grab a drink, stand around, and chat with friends, which I think is a cool idea in Norn culture. We see both taverns and bars be a big part of Norn society, where most buildings serve as one in some capacity, and it's cool that there is this pavilion off in the corner of Holbrack that is a nice place for Norn to come and drink. But you may recognize the location just west of this area, which is where the keg raw activity takes place which is a pretty unique PvP game mode that people can play every Sunday where you have to grab kegs that appear in the center of the ice field and run it back to your base, where you can see a bunch of Norn NBCs just going ham on each other and fighting over the kegs, where up on the hills above the field and brewery, you got another building where, with our imagination, we can see that kegs roll down this ramp, doing a little loop and landing in the field, and I like to imagine that many of the locals of Holbrack come to this brewery and drink while watching the keg brawl. Similarly, I imagine all the participants coming to the brewery to chat after the games. In the number 7 spot is the Fall Tavern, where Seraph's Landing is a human outpost located in the Hrathi hinterlands, right on the front lines in the war against the centaurs, where the residents around here have to deal with centaurs, bandits, and various wildlife threatening their town. And because of that, they got an inn and a bar where they can come relax. Or to give a quick shout out to the tavern, it didn't make my previous list but it's pretty cool. I love the vibes in here. But across the street is the Fall Tavern ran by Bartender Bill. You got a few Seraph hanging out in here including one that talks a bit about the Seraph war effort. And I think the vibes in here are pretty nice. It's a small little establishment where a bunch of Seraph are just trying to relax for a little bit despite what is going on outside. You can also chat with Bartender Bill who shares about why the bar is called at the Fall to which he replies, remember, it's not the Fall that will kill you, but the landing. Get it? In the number 6 spot is the Prosperity Bar. This is a small establishment which I guess is technically now closed. Located in the Prospect Valley of Dry Top, you can find the town of Prosperity. This used to be common knowledge, but most of Living World Season 2 was in 2014, and I would guess that the vast majority of people watching this video started playing after that date. But Prosperity was not destroyed in the first episode of the season, Gates of Maguma, 
and in the second episode of the season, Entanglement, a bunch of different locations around Tyria were attacked by Mordormoth, including the town of Prosperity, where I don't have too many memories of the bar prior to its destruction, and I assume Martinus was serving a couple of customers. But one really prominent part of it was the Quaggan Drupert, who sat outside begging players for gold, where a player could interact with the Quaggan and hand them a piece of gold and get nothing in return. This was a pretty popular character that people talked about a lot because he was basically a scam artist, where with the destruction of Prosperity, Drupert, and others meant an untimely demise. Where we can see Drupert entangled by some vines right outside of the bar's entrance, where of course, the ghost of Drupert now plays a prominent part in every festival, and the inside of the bar has been destroyed a little bit, but most of the furniture, alcohol, and other decorations are still there, but not the patrons. In the number 5 spot is the bar located in the highest level of the bizarre docks in the Labyrinthian Cliffs, where this is an exclusive area that is only available during the Festival of the Four Winds, where there are actually a variety of different bars all around this place that are super cool, but I especially like the bar located near the Sky Docks waypoint. It's a small little area with a few tables and chairs, a cool bar with some bar stools, and a bit of food and drinks, plus a bucket. The bartender is Falam, who is a fashionably dressed Savari that offers a variety of different drinks to you. Where back during the original Bizarre the Four Winds releases, there was a quaggan by the name of Kukuchu the Incredulous, who had Falam as an assistant. Where this quaggan became incredibly popular because of his fire breathing skills and was the talk of the whole Bizarre. Everyone loved him and his show, but as quickly as the quaggan rose in popularity, he plummeted and ended up in prison for some reason. To which Falam had left him prior to his fall from fame because he heard the cause of Mordormoth during the Heart of Thorns expansion and promptly isolated himself to prevent him from hurting others. Whereas the cause stopped, Falam returned and began to run at this nice little bar that I always like to hang out at whenever the festival is going on. In the number 4 spot is the Amnoon Casino. This has always been a place that I have loved a lot since the early betas for the Path of Fire expansion, where this is a spot in the free city of Amnoon and the Crystal Oasis that you come to during the story and also for a few other things. Where the environment in here is super cool, the central bar and kitchen is very nice with a bunch of tables spread throughout, you have Zalimber's office off in one corner, you have an awesome band playing music, you have the NPCs you come talk to about Casino Blitz, you have the Ectoblasm Sandstorm gambling, and so on. This place is just all around an incredible environment with some cool things going on and I love to just hang out in here. With that said, I am a little disappointed that there was a more going on here. I think this could have been a good place to add a couple more casino activities, where there is Choi pit fighting going on in one part of the casino, where there were originally plans for players to be able to bet on Choya, but that never made it to the release of the expansion, and I'm just someone who loves areas that have a lot of tiny mini games going on. But with all that said, the casino is still an incredible place that I love. And the number 3 spot is the beachside bar in South Sun Cove, where this is a really cool spot in Pearl Islet, which is the starting location of this zone, where you have a ton of tourists being served by the consortium here. There are a lot of patrons on the beach as well as on the tables above the bar. It's a nice beachside environment that seems like a pretty fun spot to hang out in. You can go in the water if you're brave, you have the sand, you have the bar, and it's a large space to just party at. But a cool aspect of this location is that as you go down onto the beach and towards the bar, you're stripped of all your clothing and thrown into your bathing suit. Well, your underwear. For this is a really cool concept that adds a ton of flavor to the game and I love it. But it is lacking in one fundamental way, where there aren't any ways to customize what your underwear look like. Where people have requested to have bathing suit options for a very long time. Where you can customize what clothing your character is wearing underneath all of your armor. Primarily for roleplaying purposes where there are actually a ton of swimsuit models already in the game, some of which are featured here at this bar, and it would be cool if we got the opportunity to wear these on our character. And the number 2 spot is the Dead End. This is a bar located in Divinity's Reach that most people should be familiar with, as this place played an integral part in Living World Season 1 as we met up with Marjorie Delacroix and Casimir Mead for the first time, where we returned to this location at the end of the End of Dragon story for a very touching moment. But this bar is super cool, where there are a ton of different taverns and bars located all around Divinity's Reach, some of which I featured in my other top 10 video. But most of those are located out in the open world, where this one is actually an instance. You can sneak between two buildings and go up a few steps to enter this establishment. Wish is super cool. I absolutely love interiors and in games, and I always feel like video games don't do enough of them, where this interior is really cool. It's like any other bar with some patrons, a few tables, and a cozy fireplace. There are a bunch of books on one table, you can go behind the bar and see some bottles being stored up above, and it's just a nicely decorated area. I love the vibes of this place, and it plays a pretty important part in the Guild Wars 2 story, which is a nice touch. 
And now for the number one spot for my favorite bar or club in all of Guild Wars 2, and it's gotta go to Club Kanak. This is just an incredibly iconic location in Guild Wars 2, and it was one of my favorite parts of the Ender Dragons expansion, where this location in Arborstone is unlocked after completing most of the Ender Dragon story on your first character, and is an expansion of our Savari friend's business empire, where he made quite a bit of money betting on us during the Path of Fire expansion, turned that money into more money alongside Saida, and has now expanded it even more. Whereas we look around this area, it is decorated incredibly well. You got a lot of club chairs and couches with tables and booths, a massive bar, a cool stage with a band playing, including one of the members from the disbanded Metal Legion, Kanak's office, and a bunch of other decorations. It's just a very nice area with an incredible vibe, and I love hanging out in here. But if that wasn't enough for you, there's three mini games you can play here. The first is Kanak Says, which is basically Simon Says, the electronic game, not the physical activity that Mad Keen Says is inspired by and then the other two rotate between each other as an event that starts in the club. One is a scavenger hunt where you can drive a jade bot around to collect a bunch of coins, including ones in Arborstone that you can access via a nifty event. And the second is Moa Racing, which this event is inspired by the old Dragon Bash Moa Racing activity that you can still participate in whenever the festival is live, but these are new Moa that will race around the racetrack located above most of the club, where all three of these activities are fun and you can unlock a bunch of rewards with the coins you get from it. I have had a lot of fun being here and participating in all of these, so much so that I recorded a bunch of data about the race and shared it on the Guild Wars 2 subreddit a while back. And I mentioned at the start of this section that Club Kanak is one of my favorite parts of the Ender Dragons expansion, and that is really true. I really hope that we get more areas like this in the game. When the Path of Fire expansion was released, I was super hyped by the casino, and while it is super cool, there are hints that there were more plans with that place that never made it to the live game, and I found that disappointing but it was still a cool area nonetheless, but I would love to see a location that just has a bunch of mini games in it and a tavern atmosphere. Maybe it could be another one at Canucks Ventures located somewhere in the world. We could get a nice club or bar themed area that has more racing, Choya pit fighting, some sort of scavenger hunt, ectoplasm gambling, and a bunch of other mini games that you can earn coins with and buy a bunch of rewards. And that's my list. I hope you enjoyed. This video was a long time coming, but I finally got around to making it. It ended up being a pretty nice nostalgia trip, and I really enjoyed going through all these locations and talking about them. If you enjoyed, consider checking out Top 10 Taverns and Inns in Guild Wars 2, or check out Top 10 Mount Races in Guild Wars 2. I hope you are taking good care of yourselves. Have a good one, everyone.